Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos, and today we're going to be doing this really fun peekaboo summer tumbler. As always, I'll make sure to put everything I use today into the description box below. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. All right, today I am using a 30 ounce modern curve tumbler, and I went ahead and prepped and primed my tumbler in this navy color. Now I chose this navy because it was either between navy or like a purple color, and I chose the navy because you'll see in a second the glitter that I'm using today kind of shifts between either a darker blue or a purple. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my glitter today right onto my tumbler with the epoxy method. I have about five mLs of epoxy that I'm gonna go ahead and stir up, and I'm gonna show you guys the glitter I'm using today. This is called Siren Song, and that is what is going to be our main base coat for our peekaboo. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and apply my epoxy. Now, typically, you just want to apply a very thin amount if you're using fine glitters, but because I'm using a chunk of glitter, I'm actually going to use a little bit more than you're typically used to, and that's just going to give our glitter enough room to kind of shift around and lay super flat on our tumbler, and it'll make our process a little bit easier as we go. Now, I didn't use the the full five mls there so just probably maybe half that if that all right now that the epoxy is applied we're going to go ahead and start adding our glitter you're going to notice as i'm adding my glitter i like to take pinchfuls at a time and kind of sprinkle it on that way this instead of dumping the glitter onto it this is just really going to help out figuring out where I need to add more. It just really helps out that process of making sure this glitter is going to be completely flat uh, once, once it's applied. So what I do is I just pinch it around and just kind of fill in here and there where it needs to be filled in. And again, your base color is really gonna help out as well. So that way, if any, if any of that glitter isn't fully covering it, it'll, it'll look like it's fully covered with our base coat color. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and take my opposite hand with my glove on it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove anything back from the rim. And I am just going to tap all these glitters down, making sure, again, they're nice and smooth and flat. Now, because I added just a little bit more epoxy than usual, I am gonna go ahead and place it onto my turner just so nothing shifts around on me. It, it's just a precaution. Honestly, it probably didn't need to be on the turner, but I just do it ju just as a, a precautionary type thing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that cure, and then we'll be ready to move on to adding our flood coat over top of our raw glitter. All right, our tumbler is cured and ready to go here. Now, before I apply my epoxy, I went ahead and I sprayed it down really good with my two times ultra. This is just really gonna help out from with that epoxy possibly wicking away off of our glitter, which it could happen. So I went ahead and I gave it two spritzes of that, let that dry up really good, and now we're ready to apply our flood coat. So I'm gonna use my quick set here and I have 30 mLs of epoxy mixed up. This is for our flood coat so that way it's as smooth as possible again once, we, once this cures and it won't take too long to kind of move on to the next steps that we need to go to, which is why I'm using the fast set. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir that up. I'm going to apply all 30 mLs of this epoxy onto my tumbler, making sure that I smooth it out really good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place it onto my turner. And once it's placed on my turner, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it up really good with my blowtorch. Now, as you're gonna see here, I just do really fast motions with my blowtorch, and I only do that for a couple spins. This is just gonna help out any little micro bubbles that might rise up, especially over top of the raw glitter, that's when they really start to happen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this quick motion with my blowtorch. I'm gonna let that cure, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. It is nice and cured now, and it is extremely smooth, but you want this as smooth as you can possibly get. And I did notice there were a couple lumps and bumps here and there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my sandpaper. I'm gonna go ahead and sand down that rim really well. I'm gonna sand down any little, sp any little spots that might be poking up because you want this extremely smooth for when we go to do our peek boo. So I'm gonna use my sandpaper, sand it down. I'm gonna rinse that off and then we'll be ready to apply another just very thin coating of epoxy over top of this. The reason why we add another thin coating of epoxy instead of just moving on to the spray paint is you'll be able to see all the scratches under the paint and we don't want that. We want a nice smooth surface for our peekaboo. 
All right, she's sanded, she's washed, and she's ready for a very thin layer of epoxy. I know it looks like a lot there, but I only use 10 mLs. That's all you wanna use. I was using some epoxy for something else, but just about 10 mLs. You just want a thin, thin coating. So again, I'm gonna use my, my quick coat epoxy, put that onto my turner, and we're gonna go ahead and get our decals put together and ready to go for once this has cured. So I found these images that already came with the offset and everything that you need to basically create a peekaboo. And I just found these, they're just these really cute shell designs and I thought it just went really well with what I, what I was kind of going for. So we're gonna go ahead and upload uh, the shells that you would like. I measured these down to about three inches in width and I'm gonna go ahead and stack them together. The reason I'm gonna stack them together is so that way, because I wanted two different sizes, but it, like I said, it's so simple. All you gotta do is upload it, get them down to the size that you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and make them this yellow color so you guys can see the difference. I'm gonna go ahead and place the offset over top of my other shells, and then I'm going to duplicate this. So like I said earlier, I did make these three inches in width, which some of them were a little bit different than the others. And then after I highlighted it and I shrunk down the duplicates that I'm gonna be making here in a second, I, I made those about almost two inches in, in width. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that over and I'm just gonna select all of it and kind of do it all in one thing. But I just wanted some bigger ones and some smaller ones. And now again, I am working on a 30 ounce tumbler. So you might need to adjust your sizes if you're working on a bigger tumbler or a smaller tumbler, just you know how, how you guys would like to do it. But this is how I like to do it. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the offsets in a bronze colored, textured metallic and then I'm going to cut the portion that will be the peekaboo and just a basic non-permanent vinyl. And that's just going to help after we get everything spray painted and painted to peel back once we are done. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything cut out. All right, she is super duper smooth and she is nice and cured and ready to have these decals applied. You definitely don't want to do this over top of a tumbler that is still sticky or anything like that. You need to let your tumbler cure and it'll work the best for you. Okay, guys, so don't don't be sticking down your vinyls on top of a sticky tumbler. It's not going to end well. I'm just saying, let, let it cure. All right. So now all we're going to do is just take our shell silhouettes. I'm going to start with the bigger shell silhouettes first, and then I'm just going to fill in with the smaller ones in between. And I'm just going to fill in as much as I can because the offset that's on it is right. It, it doesn't go outside of the lines at all. So the offset is actually on like the inside of the silhouette. So we don't have to worry about any type of spacing like that. All right, she is all filled in. I'm just gonna place one more right here on the bottom. And after I place this down, I'm just gonna make sure that everything is nice and smoothed down so that way no paint leaks up underneath of our silhouettes. Now we're ready to move outside. All right, the spray paint that I'm using today is called this Dreamy Lavender. I just thought it went really well with the colors of this glitter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my glove on so that way I don't get spray paint on my hand. I'm gonna shake up my can really well, make sure it's working properly, and then we're gonna get ready to spray paint. I just wanna take a second, look at that glitter, so pretty. Oh my goodness, I could stare at glitter all day. <laughs> all right, let's move on. So when I go to do this, because this is pretty much gonna be our base, I'm not, doing too much over top of it. I am gonna be doing some a textured kind of look over it, but you don't want any little drips. And so all I do is, are just these quick short bursts of the paint all over until it gets completely filled with this color. So just short, quick bursts, and that's really gonna help out with any type of drips or blotches that, that might occur if you're just constantly holding down the nozzle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let that completely dry. It took probably about an hour, but it may depend on your environment as well. It might be colder where you are, warmer where you are. You just want it to be nice and dry and have that smooth texture to it and no stickiness to it at all before we move on to that next step. All right, before we pull off our shell silhouettes, I wanted to add a little bit of a kind of like a beach wood look to it, like a, a rustic beach wood look. I'm gonna use this royal purple. It, it kind of shifts to like a golden, 
purple color once it's applied to, it depends on, on what color your, your base is as well. If it's darker, it's going to be more gold. If it's lighter, it's going to be more purple. But because our base is kind of like in between, it was more of like a, an actual golden purple color. All I'm going to do is take my chip brush. It's what I use. I'm, we're just going to do like a dry brush method with it. We're going to make sure all our bristles are nice and filled in. We're going to dab off a little bit of that paint. And then we're just going to swipe it back and forth and give it kind of this beachy, rustic look to the outside. And it's also going to give us kind of a light shimmer to it as well. But I'm pretty much applying this paint almost kind of like I would with my wood grains. That's why I said it was kind of like a, a wood look to it. Because once I, after I get this applied, you're still going to be able to kind of see our spray paint underneath, but it's going to have these streaks in it. So like I said, it looks like a beachy piece of wood. I don't know, iridescent beachy piece of wood. So just swipe back and forth, super easy, however you guys want to do it. And it dries extremely fast because we're using an extremely small amount of paint. So it only took about five minutes or so. And then I felt comfortable to go ahead and start touching it to remove our uh, silhouettes there. All right, and after I get it applied, I'm gonna go ahead and hold it up a little bit closer to the camera so you can see that's all I did, super easy. I know you guys got this. All right, now the next step, I'm just going to take my little weeding tool here and I'm just gonna start peeling back all my little silhouettes. I think when it comes to doing peekaboos, this is one of my favorite steps uh, is peeling back our, our little decals kind of exposing that glitter underneath it's it's really fun to kind of peel back and just and just watch your tumbler start to come to life so before we add our offsets i do want to apply another very thin coating of epoxy over top another 10 mls right over top of this before we apply the offsets I find that if I apply vinyl to any type of painted surface, especially the kind of vinyl that I'm going to be using, any type of metallics and stuff like that, they have a tendency not to adhere very well. So again, this is just an extra precaution. So that way my vinyl has something to stick to and won't lift up off my tumbler and I won't have to worry about that. So another 10 mLs right over top of our painted surface and then it'll be time to apply our offsets. Now I know it looks like a lot of little parts, but it was actually extremely easy to weed this. So I'm just letting you guys know <laughs> it was actually very easy to weed. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my little shell uh, offset off here. And then all you're gonna wanna do is make sure you, you find the proper shell that it belongs to. <laughs> and then you're just gonna line that up, place that down right over top there. You're gonna burnish it down really good. And then you're just gonna go ahead and move forward and continue continuing filling in all your offsets on your shells. And you're gonna see me place my hand over top of it. I just kind of like to warm it up with my hands after I get things applied. It kind of warms up that glue for the vinyl to help adhere better to the tumbler. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up. Now again, the only other thing was trying to figure out which shell was what. That <laughs> I kept having to turn it over and over again, trying to figure out, okay, which shell was it? <laughs> but that, that was pretty much it. All right, so now once it is done, we're going to go ahead and apply, get ready to apply another coat of epoxy over top of this. All right, so because I did use metallic vinyls, I, I did give it another spritz of my two times ultra. It just helps out from the epoxy wicking away off of our metallic vinyls. So I have 20 mLs of epoxy here. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up really good. And I do wanna add just one last finishing touch here. I wanna add a special glitter that you can find at socglitters.com. And I just really love how this finished up our tumbler. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my glitter here. This is called Bubbles, and I it really does look like bubbles. It's a very, it's a translucent opal that kind of reflects the rainbow, but you see there's lots of big circles in there and tiny circles. It's a very pretty mix. And I'm going to sprinkle that. I, I'm trying to concentrate in the painted areas rather than on top of the shell. I didn't mind that if it got on top of the shell, it just kind of gave it a little bit more dimension, but I just wanted to kind of focus in between the shells and the painted areas rather than all over on top of the shell, or I would have just mixed it into my epoxy. So you could e do it either way. You could mix a little bit of this into your epoxy so it was all in there so you didn't have to worry about doing what I'm doing, or if you wanted it more concentrated like I'm doing, you can just sprinkle it down onto the epoxy as you go. 
Now, once you get the amount of bubbles you would like onto your tumbler, you're just gonna take your opposite hand and make sure those glitters are nice and flat against your epoxy. You're gonna go ahead and let that cure. Then you're gonna go ahead and add your last two finishing coats of epoxy, and she is ready to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.